So a few weeks ago I made a video where I admitted my mistake of cutting the centre column off my tripod so that I could get down to ground level and I asked for comments on possible solutions and I would like to say thank you to everyone who commented. I was really blown away by the number of people who did comment. I um, got some really good suggestions. One chap, who I won't name, but cheers Franco, even went so far as to send me some photographs of his setup, which was really useful. In the end, I went for a just a super lightweight travel tripod where I can turn the, the head at a full 90 degrees and I can still get the camera down to ground level, which once I've set up, I'll, I'll show you how I've done that. It's, um, I think I was overthinking it and the solution was a lot easier than I thought it would be. So, um, yeah. We're here, I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's summer again today, having been winter yesterday and summer the day before. Um, and I'm gonna crack on and find some good stuff. So uh, yeah, let's go. So I found a thing here that looks like a, it's almost like a miniature fungi version of some kind of space alien satellite radio telescope thing. Um, when I say I found it, my partner in crime has found it. Um, so I'm going to set it up and see how it looks. Right, we are set up for this shot of this item. No idea what to call it, but it's, um, it's kind of forming an interesting shape over here slightly offset to the right. The piece I've focused on here is actually in the centre of the frame left to right but with the main subject slightly to the right. Got a nice dark background from this this tree. It looks like it's a, a tree that's been struck by lightning at some point. Just forming some nice lines here slightly angled slightly angled here so we've got a nice sort of shape pointing up to the left hand corner I think and that sort of echoes the angle that this item is facing almost if you can see what I mean. Um, so if we look through the 360 camera you can see I've got a, a this is actually my kneeling pad here and that's stopping any direct sunlight falling onto the top of the subject but also stopping it falling onto the lens so I don't get any flare otherwise these dark areas under here tend to flare quite a bit where the sun is striking the lens directly. So I've also got this tube light down on the left hand side. If I just turn that away you can see the difference that's making. It's just giving a little bit of extra light under here so this doesn't just sort of sink into inky blackness. We've just got some nice detail there. One or two light spots here might be a bit distracting so I might remove those afterwards just depending on how they look. The, uh, the light down on the left hand side is also just giving a nice bit of rim light onto the subject here which I think helps it stand out from this darkness here. So white balance daylight as always. We're going to shoot at f8. The, uh, looking at the exposure it looked as though we we're underexposing by almost two stops. We're not in actual fact because so much of the subject is dark. That obviously gives us a misleading reading from the meter so I think we're about right for exposure. Um, so yeah I'm going to shoot that. I'm focused on the very tip here at the moment. Um, I think looking at the subject here I think that is the closest point towards me. So I'm happy with that as the focus point. I'm using the pinpoint focus not because it's more accurate because it gives sort of finer control over exactly where the focus point falls. So I'm focusing there. I'm going to draw the focus slightly towards me just in case it, it has missed something. And I'm going to stack that. So I'm going to knock this back down to 100 shots. If I press the button in the right direction. Step width of one and I'm going to shoot that and uh, see what the coverage is like focus wise. So looking at the final shot in the stack, we, uh, we're past where we want sharp. I think 
anything further back than these details here I wouldn't want sharp so the shots that show all this stuff sharp I can discard those um, the Sun has also come out really brightly part way through the stack so I'm not sure how that's going to affect it but um, we'll find out when I stack it and if it looks okay here it is now Right, that shot is done, ladies and gents. Hopefully you can see what I meant about the kind of radar, radio telescope dish sort of effect of that last shot, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, the next shot, I'm only gonna move a couple of meters from that. I'm still at this big fallen tree that looks like it's been struck by lightning at some point. Um, and we found this little bit of log with these green finger things sticking up from it. So I'm gonna set that up and see how that looks. Right, we are set up on this shot, super simple composition. Just got this nice little kind of green finger subject sticking up there, just slightly offset to the right of the frame. Got this nice green moss forming the foreground and a bit of mid-ground and a nice outer focus background. You can see, hopefully you can see from the longer view, position the camera so that um, you should be able to see I've got this shade set up which helps to helps to protect the subject from the sun. Um, I've positioned the camera so that hopefully you don't see my stomach hoving into view on the left of the shot there. So we're going to focus stack this one. Um, not for the usual focus stacking reasons but I think maybe a single exposure is going to be enough but I want to be absolutely sure I hit the right focus point. So we are going to stack it um, we've got an LED light in the background here, which if I wave my hand in front of it, if I just swap hands, wave my hand in front of it, you can see how that's adding a, a bit of sort of glow across the, the moss here. Carefully remove my hand so I don't knock my contraption over. So we are shooting at f8 to avoid any sort of blooming around here if we do end up stacking exposures it looks as though we're underexposed by a stop but i don't think we really are i think that's because this background is very dark so i'm happy with that exposure because i don't want to burn out any of this stuff i don't want to burn out this little tip of this finger here so focused here just this tiny little point here I'm going to draw the focus towards me very slightly and I'm going to shoot multiple exposures as I say as if it's a focus stack. I'll either pick a single image or I may stack two or three or four but I'm going to shoot 50 images at a step width of one and see what we get. So looking at the final shot of the, it's not really a stack, it's more focus bracketing rather than stacking. Um, but regardless, we're gonna find at least one shot or maybe a few shots where the subject is in focus. So whether that's a stack or a single shot, if it looks good, here it is now. Right, the shot with the little green finger is done. Um, it took probably about half an hour to shoot that because we had lots of uh, interruptions from muggles walking past, but we got there in the end and um, yeah, hopefully that looked good. Um, now I'm gonna crack on and find something else. So after much searching, my trusty assistant, actually I don't know why I call her my assistant because she finds more stuff than I do. So I feel most days as if I am her assistant, but anyway, um, she has found a beautiful cluster of dark little mushrooms down kind of hidden under a log. My, 
my shooting angle just down here my shooting angle is very limited so i'm going to set that up as best i can i'm also competing for the space with an extremely large bee that seems to be looking for a new home um, but i'm going to set it up as best i can and see how it looks right we are set up for this shot you can see on the back of the camera here we've got these three mushrooms i've got them sort of more or less in a line my choice of composition is slightly limited by the available space and I, I'd need to damage some of the, the surrounding plants in order to get a different view but I think this is okay because we've got the large one here, one behind there, and one here that is sort of in front of the, the one behind if you see what I mean. Um, just sort of forming a nice line, got them more or less in the middle of the, of the frame. I think I might just, might just turn that very slightly. Yeah, just moved that very slightly, angled the camera slightly to the right. So this large one is offset slightly to the left of centre. My hand's shaking because I'm leaning on my elbow while I'm doing this. Um, you can see from the long shot that I'm uh, reclining like some sort of Roman emperor on the ground here. We've got the camera with the centre column inverted. I'll give you a close up of what the camera looks like in a minute. And um, I've got an LED light down on the left hand side here, which you can see from the, the top view. But in order to take the shot, I need to block out the daylight. So I'm using this uh, sort of plastic kneeling pad, which is resting on top of the lens and on top of the log that is behind these mushrooms. So um, yeah, anyway, back to the composition here. Got the three mushrooms. We've got this bit of log in the background, which I can't remove really. I'm sort of stuck with that, but I think that's okay. Just gives a nice sort of angle. It's not, it's not a leading line really, but it sort of leads in at a nice angle. We've got the LED light, which I pointed out previously at the back that is giving this sort of glow behind and is giving this side lighting to the mushrooms. Um, and because of the colour of what's behind here, this looks like the light is very warm, but in actual fact it's daylight, it's just lighting up the colour of, of what's inside. So we're going to focus stack this one. We're going to shoot at f8 to try and avoid any blooming around any edges that I'd have to fix in post-processing. It's quite a long exposure. I'm not concerned about that because everything's stationary. There's absolutely no breeze at all. So we've got no problem with movement. Um, it appears as though we are underexposing, but we're not. It's just because so much of this area is dark. Um, yeah, I think, that, I think this, although this side is very dark, I think that's still gonna look quite balanced when we see the shot afterwards. So I'm gonna focus stack this one. I'm gonna focus on the front of the mushroom here. I can't point that out on the 360 camera because the, the shade is over the subject. I'm going to bring the focus slightly towards me. And I'm going to shoot a focus stack of 150 images this time, step width of one, and see what we get. So I'm going to shoot that now. Okay, looking at the final shot in the stack, you can see the point of focus is well past anything we might want. I, I may well decide when I do the stack not to include every part of the mushrooms in the, in the zone of sharp focus. Um, I'll just see how it looks and uh, yeah, if that looks good, here it is now. Right, that shot is done, ladies and gents. Just before I call it a day, here's a, just a couple of quick shots, as promised, of how I'm getting my camera down to ground level. All I've got is a standard L bracket on the camera, um, and I'm attaching the side of that L bracket to the tripod head and just turning that at 90 degrees. So, yeah, really simple solution. I think I'd kind of tried to overthink it, and the solution is a lot easier than I'd imagined. So, yeah, that seems to work. It's rock solid, and yeah, that's what I'm going with for the time being. So hopefully that's of some use. 
But um, anyway, yeah, that's the final shot done. I'm going to call it a day and I will see you next time. Cheers.